I used to be a cop years ago, and I never, you know what I mean, ran into a catastrophe my whole time on the job that even came close to this. This is Jim Mulvaney, a 54-year-old resident of Staten Island. Today, we join him and his wife, Armin, as they return to their home for the first time since nearly drowning in their own living room. You guys need any water? Oh, thank God you. I'll bless get this. Thank you. Thank you. Stay there. Thank you. Stay there. Father Capadano Boulevard, the street we are walking on now, just parallel to the shoreline, was under 10 feet of water less than a week ago. Hurricane Sandy's storm surge extended miles onto Staten Island. More than half of the 41 people killed in New York City during the storm perished here. Jim and Armin, like many of the victims, lived in an evacuation zone and were instructed by city officials and the news media to go to higher ground. A little more than a year earlier, they heard similar warnings about Hurricane Irene, which didn't cause much damage here. It was a classic case of the boy who cried wolf. You didn't, you didn't think it was that real of a threat? It never lived up to expectations in the past. I never got a drop of water. I, I Believe me, I feel foolish, but they were right on the money this time. Today, relief organizations and regular citizens come out to help their neighbors. Jim and Armin stuff their sacks and receive something they hadn't had in days, a hot meal. Oh my God, on, please. Got your muscle. God bless you. Jim served in the New York City Police Department for nearly a decade until he injured his trigger hand in a car accident while on the job. Since the accident, Jim contracted hepatitis C and HIV. Armin, who worked briefly for the Parks Department, couldn't find another job. They were barely scraping by on Social Security and Jim's disability payments. And this was before the storm. We got nothing. Our house is gone. God bless you. I'll feed you cats even when I'm out of business, man. Don't uh, you worry. Don't I mean, want them stuff. I, I, I need something for this cat. As long as you can eat your cattle, eat, that's all we care about, brother. We ran into their local pet shop, where the owner was giving away his inventory for free. Jim took some extra cans in case he found one of his cats alive. I got it, guy. How long have you been living in this uh, neighborhood? Ten years. So I lived in the projects. And I came out here because we had a little... Nice house, you know. Come on in. Thank you. The bug door is wide open. Yeah, it's open. There it is. We stood on that roof all night. That's how high the water went to this to this level. They kicked the bridge. I'll call up and clear this off. Look what they did. Just try to be really careful. Look at this. I'm afraid this is gonna cave in. I'm not so sure about standing on it. I wanna get the Come in if you want, here. of course. Look at this place, and they broke in. Their front door was wide open, with evidence that someone had broken in. Where were your coins? All right, they were, I put them up, up on the loft. There's a loft. They're worth like a buck of PCs. I can't believe they didn't take my bike. They'll be back tonight for. They're not on the floor, right? They're gone. They're gone. Looters took some of Jim's warmest coats and his oxycodone pain medication. Fortunately, his HIV pills were still there. Yeah, this is it. This is the bungalow. <laughs> it's small. It was cozy. It was nice. We had it really fixed up. You would never know that. It was nice we and... sealed it up. The place became toasty warm. We're watching on television about the hurricane. We heard a boom. A second later, we were swimming. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was up to my chest. You can see the line. And the first thing I did was I told her, she's saying, I can't get up there. I said, yeah, we'll get you up there. I grabbed her by the legs, held her up. She made it up relatively with not the problem she thought she was going to have. Then it was her idea. The refrigerator was floating around. They float. Put the cats on the refrigerator. They, they were they were panicking. They were they were dying. They knew they were they didn't have much to go. 
one at a time, I handed them up to her. And then I climbed up last, and like I said, a burst of wind smashed me against the top, broke my ribs, and we were no sooner up there, not even five minutes, and a burst of wind took all cats, all the cats but one. We have one left. And we were hoping to see them when we came here more than anything. The hell with the coins and the dollars and the pennies. We wanted to see those cats. How'd you stay warm up there? Oh my God, it, it was in, there was no staying warm. No. I could almost laugh at that one. I, I managed to get one coat up there, my heaviest winter coat, which was goose down, and a big one at that, it went down to my knees. It just covered us and the cats, like from the waist up, so to speak. And let me tell you, if you ventured out, if you couldn't make it underneath that coat, you were in serious trouble. It was the longest night of our lives. Jim and Armin's home is on 299 Colony Street in the Midland Beach neighborhood of Staten Island, just three blocks from the ocean. The storm surge reached as high as 15 feet in some places and went another 10 blocks past their home. The couple huddled together on their rooftop for 10 hours until a rescue helicopter spotted them and saved them. They send down like a donut and you have to hold you have to hold on. I don't even like amusement park rides. That was the ride of a lifetime. Put it this way, I only want to do it once. Not twice. You know the way some kids run back online to do it again? Not this kid. <laughs> and like I said, I'm I'm getting to the point where I have to laugh. If not I'll cry. After salvaging their last remaining possessions, the couple tries to figure out where to spend the night. Put it in there. It's cake. They decide that Jim will head to his father's old age home, and Armin will stay with Jim's mother and sister in a one-bedroom apartment on the other side of the island. You know, you have everything to do, and you just don't know where to begin. But as the days get shorter and the weather gets colder, they will need a longer-term solution. To me, this is a start. It's, it's truly like being born again. 